Welcome to yet another Buried Treasures, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we take a look at a complete anomaly in the video game world. We all know that anything licensed has a real good chance of sucking donkey balls. God knows we've seen it many times before, and we've all at one time or another suffered with, with one of these horrible, horrible games. Now with that said, you would think that a game based on a product's mascot would truly suck, right? Well, this is not the case with Cool Spot for the SNES. This mild-mannered platformer brings a lot to the table. But first I have to answer a question I know a few of you are asking yourselves. Just who or what was this Cool Spot guy anyway? Well, back in the early 90s, 7up decided that they needed some sort of a mascot to help sell their soda. And instead of coming up with some kind of a cutesy ass character from out of nowhere, they decided to bring the little red spot on their cans and bottles to life and make it the coolest damn thing on the planet. Seriously, just fucking look at it. Shit, this guy makes Fonzie look like a fucking nerd. Wow, uh, a Happy Days reference. That's a first for me. So, 7up now was ready to market this little guy to the moon and back. And amongst all the marketed goodies, a video game wa was released by Virgin Interactive. And before you dismiss this game as another shitty licensed shit pile, hear me out. This game kicks ass in ways I never thought imaginable. The game is, at its core, a simple platformer. You jump all over the place trying to collect cool points, represented in this game by red spots. You need to collect these points in order to save your fellow spots at the end of each level. Then you move on. Standing in your way are enemies such as mice, crabs, spiders, giant fish, bees, and a ton of other things. The enemies are perfectly balanced, so they have to work to actually kill you, and you have to do a little bit of work to actually kill them. Also standing in your way are in-level obstacles, such as barbed wire, fish hooks, mouse traps, and the perennial favorite of all platforming games, water. Now, the water will instantly kill you, while everything else will just drain your health a little. And speaking of your health, I want you to take a look at this game's health bar. Yep, it is your spot. And as you take damage, that face will begin to melt. And when you totally die, you see this awesome animation of Spot dying and jumping back up, happy to continue his little quest. Once more, a buried treasure has brought a cool death animation that I just need to show. Damn, this is awesome. Controls in this game are tight, responsive, and almost flawless. I really wish that all games had control this good. The only thing I can really gripe about is the fact that the jumping is just a little bit wonky in this game. Because while well, Spot is able to rocket very high distances when you jump, and if you don't know this over time, it is, it, it is, it is going to cost you and it is going to piss you off, but... But, but once you actually have his jumping down, then it won't pose a huge problem for you. Now, the levels in this game are, are actually pretty good, but there is one small problem. And it is that the draw distance is really fucking short. And this can prove to be a true problem at times. Let's just take this level right here, for instance. You have no enemies to worry about, so you, so you don't have to worry about dying from taking damage. But you have a lot of precision jumping to do. In fact, that's all this level is, is just, is just precision jumping. Now, since spot jumps so high and the draw distance is so short, it is a bit of a challenge to figure out exactly where the hell you're supposed to land and death will happen. And it, and it will happen often the first few times you play this level. So those of you who are quick to anger may want to find a cheat code to get past this level. The music in this game is absolutely phenomenal. In fact, this game won awards for its music and for its sound. I want you guys just to give this stuff a listen for just a second. Once more, we see why most people say that Tommy Tellerico is amongst the best musical composers in the video game industry. Almost anything which this man touches turns into perfect musical gold. 
And speaking of all of the awards which this game won, I know some of you are wondering, why then is it a buried treasure? Well, let me just go back and redefine a buried treasure for you guys. To me, a buried treasure is any sort of a forgotten game or a game that has just fallen through the cracks over, you know, the years. And since this game has been mostly forgotten since it came out 15 years ago, this is the perfect definition of a buried treasure because nobody remembers this uh, game, it seems. Actually, I'm asking around. And, guys, here's the best part. Cool Spot is playable on a ton of different systems. There's a version of this game available for the SNES, the Genesis, the Game Boy, the Sega Master System, as well as both Amiga and DOS platforms. So finding a system that has a version of Cool Spot on it shouldn't be too hard. And if that isn't enough, there was a sequel released for the Genesis, the Sega Saturn, and the Sony PlayStation called Spot Goes to Hollywood. I haven't played it yet, but if it's half as good as this game was, expect a Buried Treasures video on that one as well. Now, there is also a Spot puzzle game available for the NES, the Game Boy, and the Amiga, but I really wouldn't recommend it too much. It just didn't it just didn't grab me when it went when I first played it. Anyway, you really should try out Cool Up Spot though. This game just kicks ass, plain and simple, and you owe it to yourselves to play this game and see how awesome it fucking is. All right, Kirby's, get out there, guys, and earn your pay. Hey, hey, hey.